Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth episode of React Redux series. In the first episode, we looked at how Redux really works. Uh, second episode, we looked at a simple example of Redux in isolation without React. And the next episode, we did React Redux integration. So now this episode, we are going a little bit more complex. Um, we're going to use a state that is not simple integer. Uh, and we're going to look at how to update the state immutably. And if you if you aren't following the entire series, I would suggest you do so. You can bookmark the series. I'll provide a link here uh, to the playlist. And welcome to Texas Tutorials. All right, so to start with, uh, instead of uh, creating project from scratch, I have already created a project for you, uh, which is actually what we did in a last tutorial. And I uploaded it on my GitHub site and you can download it from here. You can clone it uh, basically. And uh, the URL is github.com slash git, And you can find it in the description as well. All right, so after cloning, uh, when I run the project, I would get this age here and then I have two buttons age up and age down when I click on age up it increases the age and when I click on the age down it decreases the age so let's look at the code and the source folder I have a store folder and inside I have a reducer and reducer I have an initial state which is basically has one property called age and I have two actions age up and age down which takes the current state uh, creates a copy and increases the age if I click on the age up and decreases the age if I click on age down. Very simple, right? And in the app.js, I have two buttons, age up and age down, and then the age div. All right. So this is what we have right now. And what I would suggest is for you, just watch the entire video and then um, go to the GitHub, clone the project, and then work on it. So this way you get the whole picture before you and start working on it, okay? So now in this tutorial, we wanna focus on adding a little bit of complex uh, state than just simple num a number, right? Uh, so what I wanna do is every time uh, you click on that age up and age down button, it needs to add this value into an array. So it will create a record every time you click a button, right? Uh, either button actually. And it would hold that in, uh, in another uh, property inside a state which is an array so for that since our state is inside the reducer here I am going to create another property called history as you guess it right and it's an array if I click on those buttons I would need to add an entry into this history so how do we do that before since we have only one property we are doing this way but I'm just gonna comment this out and do something else so when I click on the age up and it dispatches the action, I want to return an object. And here, as you guessed, first thing I want to do is create a copy. So I'm going to say state. So this creates a copy of the state. Remember, in React, you never mutate the state directly. So you need to create a copy. Then uh, for the age, you need to increase the age by one. So you can say age is... Uh, your current age so state dot age plus uh, we have that action dot value right so we can say action dot value so this is the payload which is nothing but one so if I look at the actions here dispatch to props I have a value as a payload so this I can add it here to the age the current age as for the history, I would need to now add this new age into the history. So normally, if I want to add something to an array, I would use push method, right? However, push doesn't really work here because push actually mutates the array. We don't, do not want to mutate the array. We want to um, actually create a copy of the array and then add it. So what we can do is there is a special method uh, that is available. State dot history dot concat, and the concat what it does it actually instead of mutating the array it actually returns a new array, and you can add whatever the element that you want to add add here. 
So instead of just adding a simple age, I want to add an object. And this object would also have a property called age. And I can simply stay. Uh, remember this action dot value, we can add it here as well. So now when I click on the age up button, it would add that to the history as well. And similarly, I can just copy. And when I do the age down, so instead of plus, I want to do minus because he's subtracting the age. All right, so now it should work. However, if I go back here, it doesn't really do anything because it, I do have the uh, history, but I'm not displaying anything here. So I want to display it here on the page. So for that, I would have to go to my app.js and underneath the age down button I need to create a break so I can cleanly do this so normally I don't use the HR tag but here I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna have a div called history and here I will have another div which will hold the list of uh, history all right, which will be nothing but a UL. And I would now for each element, I would need li. So how do I get this history into here? I cannot use a for loop. I have to use a map function. If you know React, you can easily use map function to output uh, li. Problem is, my map state to props only has one property. So we need to map that second property called history here. This would be a simple state dot history. And now I can use it here. So I would say this, this dot props dot history dot map. And inside here, I would have an element so each element and I would output and what goes inside here since I have an element so this is each element inside the the, the list right so can say el dot I already know that it has a age a property inside the history the I use the curly brackets all right so when I click on the age up it adds another record when I click on age down it age adds another record so it works but it has it's quite ugly it has its dot here so let's uh, format it nicely so I'm just gonna go to CSS and since this is not a CSS class this is not a CSS tutorial I'm just gonna add a class called history item and I'm just gonna add some padding some margins some background and all that all right so I added some list style equal to none so I, we don't see those dots and then added some border and some background color and some padding and margin all that stuff and we can we can use that uh, class here so as you know you cannot use class uh, we have to use class name in react all right so now if I click on here I have nice little box and it's formatted nicely but there's a warning each child in an array or iterator should have a unique key which is correct if you if you are using list inside react you need to have a unique key. and there is a reason for it though the way it renders it and all that stuff for the for, for the virtual dome and also we need an id so that the next functionality we want to add is if i click on each item i want it to remove it uh, and i can only do it if i have an id so we need to add it anyway right so if you want to learn more about it, I have a tutorial on list uh, in React. I'll provide a link here. All right, so if I want to add that property, I need to add it here. So when I can concat it, I not only have age property, but I need an ID property. And since I want a unique ID, simple way to do it is I can use uh, math.random. And it should give me a unique ID. It's not a foolproof 
there are chances that you might get a duplicate but for this tutorial it should be okay you probably won't get that okay uh, there are other ways to you to do it but I think for this is fine so I want to use it in a both for age up and age down button okay now what I want to do is uh, in the ally I want to use that key so I can say el dot id so now if I click on here there is no warning okay so it goes away all right so the next thing I want to do is when I click on each item I should be able to remove it so for that I would need to have a click event on each item which would be ally right so how do I do that I can create on click equal to which takes a handle right um, we don't have a handle yet but we're gonna create one later on and we know it's gonna be a prop right which is mapped here because we're using redux so I can already say that props dot let's call it uh, what's called on delete item okay and let's format it nicely so that all right so here I would need on delete item and it's gonna have a dispatch what is gonna pass it's it I need type uh, we can call it delete item remember always use uppercase for action so you can and that's the general rule and we need to also provide a payload the payload would be the key remember we use the key here so that's the key so we need to provide a payload um, I can call it an ID well let's call it a key uh, where do we get this key from so when I click on it the event should pass a key right so we need to modify this here so we cannot simply do it this way we need to have a function that passes the key here so element dot id right the same key that we are passing here now that key is available here and we can simply use it so now when I dispatch it it don't not only dispatches this type delete item but it will have a it will dispatch also the key as a payload so in the reducer we need to create another case uh, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and I'm just gonna call it okay let's see what it should return we already know that we need to copy this state that's always the case uh, here we are not using age because we're not clicking on the age up or age down but we're clicking on each item in the history right so we need to modify we need to delete entry from the the history array now normally you would use pop if I want to re remove from the end of the array or you can use a splice but instead I would use filter which is much better state dot history dot filter and the filter would have an element the way the, the way filter works is basically you you put a condition if that condition is not met then you filter that item so here we already know that uh, this each item would have an ID right so we can say if it's not equal to the action dot key action dot key is nothing but the payload right that we pass if it's not then pass it otherwise filter it so basically this is filtering the item that you clicked on essentially so if I click on age up age down and if I click on here it removes it 
25. 25 is removed. Click on 21, it removes 21. So it really works. So in nutshell, if I wanna um, add something to an array, I would have to use concat method. And if I wanna remove something from, a, uh, from an array inside the state, I would have to use a filter method. And you can use the, the key of the element to use to actually filter it. That's about it, folks. And I will upload the, this, this project on the GitHub so you can look at it. And there will be a, a link in the description. So for the next tutorial, the next episode of this series, uh, we will look at how you can break down the reducer into multiple because you might want to do that sometime when your project grows and your reducer becomes too large, you can break it down into multiple reducers and then uh, ultimately you can combine it. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial and if you did, please like, subscribe and provide a nice comment. And you can help this channel multiple ways. Um, I do a lot of work on this tutorial. And if you wish to help me, uh, you can do many ways. Uh, the first way is you can translate the video for me. So um, to your native language, whichever that might be. Uh, I will provide the information in the description. The second one is you can help me via Patreon. I'll provide a link here. Or you can buy merchandise. Uh, I have a new thing called a Teespring. I'll provide a link here where you can buy you know, merchandise if it's available in your country. If it's not, let me know. And I'll see if I can, if I can work this out. Also, don't, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you.